Welcome to the Bastards in Motion podcast. Join us as we jump into the world of CrossFit and celebrate the strength, resilience, and determination of Masters athletes. Hey, Rick, we're doing it again. This is episode 51. We had Pat Barber last week for our 50th episode, which was awesome. Episode 51 already. Um, man, how are you doing this week so far? Doing well, doing well. Uh, hanging in there, I should say. It's January, and, and we saw the sun yes. for the first time in about a week today. How about you? Dude, I saw the sun too. In fact, this afternoon, I, I trained this morning, got home from the gym, and I have a ton of work to do, like a ton of um, just whatever, just work. I've got, you know, I have this checklist. Mm -hmm. Here's all the things I've got to do. And the sun was out, and it's the nicest day of the week. And I was just like, man, you know, I think I'm going to work tonight after we record our podcast. And this afternoon, uh, me and the boys, uh, they're 10 and 6, we went out and collected just random branches and stuff that are on our, we've got a long driveway and there's all these branches just on the side of the drive. So we pulled all these branches up and uh, built a fire because we have a fire pit and we built a big fire and the boys, I let the boys burn a bunch of leaves. Um I was like, hey, any any leaves you rake up, boys, you can throw on the fire. And so we had a little bit of a oh, boys' perfect. afternoon uh, burning things. And yeah, now uh, now I'm working because the sun is down. Well, I was going to say, well, and, and speaking of sun, uh, I do think of you and I grumble when I'm out walking the dog, you know, your favorite buddy, the dog, uh, and it's gray as can be. And you've talked about how, um, you know, you just sit and try to get as much vitamin D and in the morning there in your eyes and I'm like, God, yes. there's not a damn ray of sunlight out here. And there hasn't been for a week. So I know. My son? So I'm like, yeah, I'm I tell you what, that's <laughs> the one thing about the move from Colorado uh to to uh Alabama is there's not as much sun. I mean when the sun is out here right. it's it's absolutely gorgeous. But in Colorado the sun is out well over three hundred days a year. So you can count on the sun every day. You can't count on the sun, certainly mm -hmm. in where you're at, uh, in Ohio, can't count on the sun nope. down here. But when the sun comes out, it, you mean, you get, you change plans. I changed like mm -hmm. my whole day so that I could be outside. Yep. Uh, also work on my sauna and just put a roof on the sauna. So uh, a lot got accomplished today. And now tonight I'm going to hunker down and spend a lot of time in this little office here. So now that's okay. It's, it's good. To work. You it's got good. it. That's now right. it's time to work. It is the winter. Well, we've, We've got some news. Why don't you lead us off? Uh, sure. Well, this news was all over social media. Uh, in fact, uh, I actually saw it uh, on CNBC today. It was a big enough story that it made their uh, their little news wow. break. Uh, but how Tom Brady's uh, uh, brand, TB12, is merging with Noble, and he will become the uh, second largest shareholder in the company. Uh, as a result, after this merger, um, if you remember, Noble was sold to the gentleman who uh, uh, developed un under Under Armour drink. Um, I mean, Body Armour drink. Yeah. And, not Under Armour. <laughs> body Armour and a couple of other yeah. sports drinks and has made a killing selling it. Uh, one of them to Coke. Uh, yeah, he sold sold Body Armour to Coke for five and a half billion uh, just a couple of years ago. So Oof. that is wow. the man that's really in charge his management team is, is running Noble, merged with Tom Brady's brand. It's interesting because the uh, the picture that was all over social media was Tom standing there in a in a Noble shirt, which uh, um, little little really interesting. So we know yeah. the route they're they're going, and uh, I guess we can finish that up by saying we're all on the Go Ruck bandwagon now. <laughs> As a result, <laughs> yeah, I would say Noble, I, I would say uh, when they. Everything they had a big sale. What was it like two weeks ago? Seventy percent off all of their CrossFit stuff. Yeah, um, you know yep. it, it make, makes me think. Like, do I have the last few pairs of Noble lifters um, that they'll ever make? Will they continue making lifters and continue making shoes mm -hmm. that are uh, sports specific or CrossFit like? Um, I mean, probably not. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. All I know is um, I do like the lifters. <laughs> I started with them in 2018, mm -hmm. and I've received two or three pairs from the CrossFit Games that I've saved. And you know, once I wear out a pair, I'll have another one. But I have like two pairs in the hopper for like future usage. Oh. Um, so it might be 2025 by the by the time I crack open the last pair of lifters because you know they don't go bad fast. I, I wear them you know so sparingly. But um, yeah, it's it's 
you know, turning a leaf in the in the CrossFit world, you know, we we had Noble as really a part of a big part of the CrossFit world for four yep. plus years. Yep. Three um, years. And yeah, 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 that's that big contract. Three years. Okay, three years. That's it. Um Yeah. Go Ruck. Yep. I, I don't know. We'll see. I mean Go Ruck has shoes. They have some pretty cool boots and I I, I like the right. rucking backpack, so I'm excited to see where that goes. Someone someone actually asked me the other day, you know, will Go Ruck sponsor the Masters? Um, and I don't think so, actually. I, I think our sponsor think will so. be right. unique and different. So yeah. I don't think right. we'll be wearing Go Ruck shirts, um, Go Ruck outfits. No. I don't know. No. I, I, well, yeah. The individual and team certainly will have – you'll get to know that Go Ruck uh, logo real well especially yes. from signage and all, but no, I think, I think it was well communicated that it would be a separate sponsor. Um, I think the last time we talked yeah. to Joe, uh, yeah. he had made mention of that, but again, we're still waiting on information as of this recording. We're waiting on some information as to when and where, yep. uh, hell with the sponsor. I know that'll take care of itself. I think when and where will be important because some of the other news is, uh, they released tickets to, uh, the public for the games down in yes. um, Fort Worth sold out. Uh, sold there out. There was the picture of be- before the opening, the open seats that were available in the arena, and then hours later, what was left. And then after that, it was done. Um, there will be a second yeah. release of some a smaller batch of tickets in June. I know I did read that. Yeah. Uh, Dickey's Arena yeah. is going to be the place. Uh, but again, Wild. Tell us our information because we're not going to more than likely not going to Dick. We're not going there. Even as a spectator. Nope. Yeah. Even as a spectator. So I, that I, was more I, news. I know wheels are in motion. Um, I, I know that I mas- I know masters have okay. the wheels in motion. I know it's, it's uh, I know it's moving forward. Um, and that once, once things are nailed in or whatever, the ink dries, I, I, I know they'll make an announcement as soon as absolutely possible. Uh, but I know that, uh, you know, they, 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 I, I think that the smart thing is to not pre-release anything before anything's finalized on locations and dates. Correct. Um, but that doesn't mean we're not anxious for it. Um, I know things are in the works, but I'm anxious sure. to know so that I can make, you know, make those plans. Um, I've also committed to uh, a team at Wadapalooza in late September. Mm-hmm. So as long as there's not any issues with like, you know, dates and times, like I'm, I'm certainly not going to. I, I can't commit to that until I absolutely know when the, our games are. I don't think our games would be as late as that, uh, but I'm not going to, I'm going to, I, I know what my priority, my priority is the games and a team competition mm-hmm. at Wadapalooza, you know, could be fun. Um, and it's just for, you know, extracurricular. You know, West, fun, fun. West coast Wadapalooza, first year yes. of Wadapalooza. Correct. I don't know what they're calling it. West coast. <laughs> Wadapalooza so, West, Wadapalooza, California. So. Wadapalooza um, West. Yeah. But that'll that'll be fun. No, that'll be that'll yeah. be real interesting. Yeah. I saw so, Boz at uh, by level two. I took my level two this weekend. Um mm-hmm. out up in Nashville and walked in on Saturday morning and Boz walked in to say hi. And that was pretty cool. Uh so I, I popped over, said hi to him, and uh of course I asked him what uh what the first CrossFit open workout was, and he declined to tell me what it was. So, yeah. um, he, Shoot. he actually made a good point. He's like, Jake, you don't want to know what it is. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to know. Like, <laughs> I was like, that's true. I don't really want to know whatever it is. We'll just do it. Uh, but it just feels obligatory to ask it. Maybe it's a cliche to even yeah. ask. Yeah. Um, but he looked good. He looked happy. <laughs> he was happy to be through with administrative season. You know, it's funny after, after the games, I think they take a little bit of time to reflect about the games, but then they move into, the oh, rule book in the administrative parts of everything. So he was really mm-hmm. glad to get to 2023 out of the way and move into 2024 feeling, you know, fresh with momentum for this year. So, um, yeah, he's, he looked good. Yeah. I don't know. He's a nice guy. Such a nice guy. We'll have him and we'll, we'll have him on the podcast again. I'm looking forward to it because we will be loaded with questions again, like we always are. And I, and he was it's so yes. good to talk to last year. Um, we'll have, uh, yep. even, uh, more, more pointed ones, uh, this next time around, I believe. Uh, also, yeah, it's really interesting. The open is now a month so away. So much has changed. Oh yeah. Um, 
judges no, you course. Good. Good. I'm almost through that. Yeah, I'm almost through judges course. Uh, I have the final exam to take. But when I was getting a little tired last night, when I looked at the approximate length that it was supposed to be and the, the big warning and bold, do not close your browser. If you're not done your changes, I was like, I'm not going to hit the start button until I'm fresh and ready to commit to it, to count those double unders on the screen again, all over the place. So uh, oh, getting very close to yeah. finishing that. Let me know how it goes. I'm going to need to do that. I, <laughs> I just completed the level two assessment today, like post level two weekend. There okay. is actually a level two assessment sure. that you have to complete online that is a lot like the judges course uh, in its format. Yep. And it was fun. Uh, it was fun. It took me maybe maybe thirty minutes, uh, but it's it was very kind. Uh, you got to you know if you missed a question, you got to redo that question, not the whole thing, just that question. So it was oh, right, it was good. Right. It was really good. Um, and I'll save my pick of the week. Uh, so something I learned from my L two this weekend for my my tip or pick of the week. So I'll have a tip this after uh, at, tip after week. at the end. Um, it. It'll be the tip of the week. What what other what else do we have in news, Rick? Um, it, since it's well, since it's winter for most of the country, uh, good time to uh, grab a book, either listen to an audio book or pick up a book and read. A uh, couple of books on in the fitness realm, I think, are worth uh, mentioning. Uh, some, uh, you know, there's grab the list here uh, from a popular um, website, but. It's it's funny because you go through some of these names on the on the list, and you and I have either uh, read them or talked about them. And there's a few new ones on here yeah. that I haven't, and I am certainly looking forward to picking up. Um, you know, the I, I think the first uh, CrossFit book, uh, you know, that I ever picked up and read was Rich Froning's. Um, when he wrote a book, hmm. uh, he I think he released his before Castro's. Um, that was new yep. to the community, like, oh, wow, somebody actually wrote a book about this, you know, and it, it, we all know the stories now, but it was an entertaining read. And if you haven't, um, that's that's old school and uh, it's worth picking it back up. But uh, Frazier's book, uh, Hard Work Pays Off, I have not either listened to or read yet. And so I went to yes. my audio, uh, audio app and uh, grabbed it. And of course, it's... Uh, um, in demand and I'm in line to grab it. So, uh, I will do that. And uh, also, gotcha. do you use um, Libby for your audio stuff? Th pardon me? I was going to ask, do you use Libby for your audio? Like, do you check out your book, your audio books online? Yeah. Yeah. That's I, cool. I use Libby and I use audible. Um, so I do get that credit a month from audible and, uh, you know, once you've grabbed the book and you're done with it in three days, you're like, Oh shoot, here we go. Not really yes. going to pay for another book yeah. when Libby's there, but with Libby, like the library, since it's run by that, you know, so many libraries um, use it. Uh, you just have to wait in line like you used to for the books to become available. So yeah. I yeah. hop around that Makes app sense. a lot cool. more to find exactly what I want to do. You use that one too? Yeah. Uh, my kids do. Excellent. <laughs> the ki my kids, they, yeah. they listen okay. to audio books all day long. Um, so they love Libby and they'll just self check out stuff, which is really cool. Um, as opposed to just self purchasing in audible that that's not good if they just do that. Um, but I listen, I listen to so many podcasts that, that I, I have a lot of audiobooks that I want to catch up on, but I would also have to juggle right. the podcasts and I get behind. Um, so it's very, right. exactly. I, I have to rethink my, my listening strategy. Cause there are some books in the queue right now or in my, my, my virtual queue that I really want to dig into. Yep. Um, but I just, I don't want to also, also don't want to miss out on my daily podcasts that I love listening to. So well, it's we'll talk about our podcast little, someday. What, what we listen to. I was going to say, it's a little bit of a balance, but uh, I do have hard work pays off in queue and also built to move by Kelly Starrett. Okay. Um, I have not read that one. Yeah. And I think uh, given um, Kelly's uh, vast knowledge, I think that might not, be one you want to listen to that might want to pick that pick that up and read it so i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna yeah. do some digging on that but i thought since it's, it's time of year uh there are plenty of fitness options fitness book options out there even brooke wells yeah. came out with her new one um i think i saw a couple of posts she did the audio book recording herself for that which is i think is always yes if the author doesn't mind doing that i love just hearing the author's voice read the yeah, book to you agreed. i think that's a great great way i think the story just tells more so brooke wells has her new book out as well 
um, coming back from the injury, uh, uh, you know, comeback story. Who doesn't love a comeback story? Yep, yep. And then um, so. you mentioned a couple more, more, a couple of others before the show. Like, uh, wasn't uh, Jocko's book in there? Yep, extreme ownership with uh, with Jocko and 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 his partner Leif Babin. Yeah, um, that is that is one I've yep. listened to uh, on leadership. That is a fantastic uh, read. Listen, mm. however you want to describe that. Yeah. Um, he mixes in a lot of good lessons with uh, real world examples. And he's just a very good storyteller. Um, he has that gift. Yeah. So it's, uh, it keeps you, hmm. it keeps you engaged. And then uh, breathe. Also, we, we've mentioned this before uh, by Nestor, by James. It's a good one. That's it. Yeah. Fascinating yep. book on how we should be breathing. I, versus yeah. That really is... as a society, how we are and how it's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's a game changer. Um, I think even performance wise, mm-hmm. the book breathe was, was one of the most influential books on my performance, um, out of all, out of any books. I mean, how strange is that I've, I have, I have plenty of internal motivation, but I love, I've listened to David Goggins book. It was great. Um, I want to listen to, sure. to, to mm-hmm. Jocko, Jocko's yeah. book. Uh, but breathe was one of those where I was like, okay. Um, you know, breathing to get to sleep. There was some, some breath work that, that could help calm you down. Um, various breathing techniques mm-hmm. to uh, stimulate your central nervous system or, or calm down your central nervous system. Um, the, uh, the other idea in that book that it's not oxygen or lack of oxygen that's causing us to breathe like crazy. It's actually the buildup of carbon dioxide in our, blood, in our blood that causes our brain to think we're drowning, breathe harder and breathe harder. And some, there's something mental about that, knowing that like in the middle of a workout, I might be dying and gasping for breath. But I'm actually getting plenty of mm-hmm. oxygen. I'm not going to die from lack of oxygen, right. even right. though I feel like I'm 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 drowning. It's I'm going to be okay. I just have a lot of carbon dioxide that needs to get out, which is why I'm breathing hard. And you know, sometimes it, that can help me uh, keep pushing when I really want to tap the brakes. Um, just knowing that I'm not going to die, <laughs> knowing what's actually happening. Right. Uh, but that was a that's a good book. Well, I've list, listened to that a few years ago now, and such an impact might up might be worth uh, the refresher too you know i uh, don't take up the podcast time but work that in somehow too um i know and Ooh, that's and that's an though, audible book so it's an audible book uh the uh yeah. the ability or thinking of your breath work swimming and you've brought that up many times open water oh, yeah. jump in yeah. have that little sense yeah. of panic but it's the rate and the cadence mm-hmm. of your breath work um how important that yes. is well, we'll just say in open water versus pool, uh, or or pool for some yes. some people too. Uh, you're you're not yep. starving for oxygen. <laughs> I guess is the way to right. You're gonna be okay. It's just it's it's just regulating your breathing. I mean, you know how we we do imams to f- where the clock forces us to work or to rest. Um, the swim mm-hmm. forces us to breathe. Or not breathe. It's it's a it's a wild thing mm-hmm. that our swimming stroke dictates our uh, our breathing pa- pace, and uh, and that could be uh, something that's a really it's a really nice training tool to help calm and regulate our breathing. So, um, yeah, great book. Yeah. And uh, you, I haven't been in a pool since since Arizona, Rick. Um, you know, we've been traveling and all okay. that. So I, now, right. just speaking of that, I got to find a sure. pool. I got to get back into the my Thursdays. I've been using as catch up days to catch up on work, but Thursdays. For Boulder athletes, we can swim on those days, and I don't want to get behind on swimming. I, you know? I so, so I'm taking um, uh, taking it and running with your Thursday program. You got it. I love it. <laughs> good, good man. Good man. In the um, pool. Well, I you know we had we had this idea of of you know, we're, we're we're getting excited for the open. It's coming. It's this month actually, the open, and that's an exciting time of year. So it, we we could. We could try to predict what the workouts will be, but that's, it's just silly. So we're not even going to predict what the workouts will be. We're not even going to predict, predict any of the equipment. We know that the open is going to have the same equipment that it's always had. Um, that's what Boz revealed mm-hmm. on a, on a podcast recently. Uh, just nothing's changing, just standard equipment. So we're not going to see anything new. It's just going to be the CrossFit open. And you know, Rick and I, mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of people, a lot of gyms, a lot of training programs will be practicing CrossFit open workouts in preparation for the open, which I think is super fun. Um, and we've been doing that ourselves. So I thought maybe we would cherry pick 
um, I don't cherry pick, but pick a few open workouts or or recent workouts. I was thinking that uh, of, of an age group qualifier workout in my head uh, where we could share, you know, uh, what the workout is, the historical open workout or the historical workout um, mm-hmm. and the strategy that maybe you used to get through that workout. Was that a good strategy? Was that a bad strategy? Have you done the workout since with a better strategy? Um, you know, I think it's, an, it's, I think it's important to um, go into open workouts or really any workout with, with a, with an action plan, you know, or plan A and a plan B and sometimes right. a plan C. Correct. Um, otherwise you're just, you just three, two, one go and like, Hey, let's see what happens. Well, that's usually a fail uh, in a competitive environment. So um, yeah, we've, I, I know that I've had some strategies that worked and some that did not work. And I'd love to share <laughs> some of those successes and some of those absolute sure. failures. Um, so I know, I know you have some too. Um, Rick, do you have a, do you have a workout in mind? Would you like to start? Would you like me to start? Well, uh, since I, I stumbled over the workout a couple of weeks ago that turned out not to be an open workout, turned out to be Wadapalooza. Uh, I do have one in mind. I would prefer to look it up and get it specific. And so I can present to our listeners the actual workout. And I don't sound like some bumbling idiot. Um, I have, again, I've never missed an open workout, so I know what I've done. It's just a matter of recalling the specifics. So I'll flip it back to yes. you, and I'm searching okay. for the first one you, example you that I would like to use. You got it. All right. Well, I will, I'm going to pull out from the archives um, the open 17.4, which was a 13-minute uh, AMRAP. As many reps as possible in 13 minutes, 55 deadlifts. Men are at 225. Women are at 155. 55 wall balls, standard weight, standard height. 55 calorie row, yep. 55 handstand pushups. Uh, I've never finished the handstand pushups in this workout. Uh, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, I During the open, I had not finished. So when this first came out in, in 2017, I was pretty excited. I was like, man, I can deadlift like yep. no one else. I got this deadlift. And this was uh, a year that uh, I, I wanted to qualify for the games with every bit of my passion, my heart. I'd been training like a maniac to try to get to the games. I was 41 years old and this was the year I was going to make it in my Mm -hmm. mind. So this workout comes out and I, part of the uh, group. I, I, yep. Yep. Right there. Just got in there. So I, I jump in to this workout with the idea. I didn't have a plan at the time. I wasn't very strategic about how I approached workouts. I just went for it. And I did something like 40 deadlifts to kick it off with. I was like, I'll just get through these deadlifts real quick. So mistake number one was doing like 40 deadlifts to start off with. That's a terrible idea. Um, I'm not I'm broken. Yes. 21, yeah. 22 years old. Yeah. So I, I do like 40 and then I do 15. Uh, and I get into the wall balls and I am, I'm not redlined, but my entire posterior chain, my hamstrings, my glutes, they're dead. So now I'm doing sets of 10 on wall balls, which is not a bad strategy, but I'm not choosing to do sets of 10. I'm doing sets of 10 because I'm dying. I'm, a- I'm absolutely dead because I went so <laughs> crazy into the, the deadlifts. So uh, whatever, I get through the, 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 the wall balls. The row was some sort of disaster. I don't know how, I don't know what I did on the row. I probably rode, you know, a thousand, 1050 or something. I got to the handstand pushups and I am good at handstand pushups. It, it, at least in my head, I'm good at handstand pushups. So I get into these and I do something like, again, I did something like 15 to kick it off with. Um, and I was pretty tired, but I, I just, I'm like, let me just knock off as many as I can. I may have done, I may have done 20 as well. I don't know, 15 or 20. Uh, and then I kick up again for another set and I do something like four. <laughs> so yeah, that's what happened. Everyone knows what You're happened. Pushing. I burned myself. Yep, we've all been uh, yeah. there. Uh, so, you know, this isn't my gym. I'm in front of my entire gym. Uh, it's Friday night lights and I, I may have gone last or something because I'm really going to give them a show. And now I'm doing sets of two and one handstand push up for like, I don't know how much time I have left, but I don't have much. I think I have four minutes and I think I got through 34, maybe 38 handstand push ups. Like there was absolutely no chance I was completing yep. 55 handstand push ups with that strategy. Yep. And, and it wasn't about desire. I had all the desire in the world to crush this thing. And I just went 
at it like a maniac. Now I retested uh, the Monday after, and I may have gotten two more handstand pushups. If I fast forward two years, I did this workout uh, in, in as a preparatory workout towards the CrossFit Open. It was just a Friday, and I did this workout. Right, and I'm pretty sure I got thirty or forty deadlifts into uh, the, into the deadlifts. I got through it no problem. But I know that my second approach on this workout a few years later with a few much more experience was all about pacing and breaking things up, never, never killing myself on any of the movements. I'm pretty sure I went probably, you know, 15, 15, um, 15, 10 on the deadlifts, maybe even less than that on the deadlifts. Um, maybe, maybe 10, forced 10, 10, 10, 5, something forced break to keep things right. Under yep. control. Same thing on the wall balls. Probably sets of 10 with like two or three seconds, maybe five seconds of rest to keep everything under control. The row is the row. And then handstand push-ups, even though I could have probably done 20 or 25 to kick it off with, I'm pretty sure I broke it up into like eight, seven, five, 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 five. And it it was so much better, so much easier, a lot less panic, never failing, just choosing to get my way. And now what's once I got back to the deadlift, I was actually like, oh, no, I had like two minutes to do deadlifts. And I was pretty tired at that point. So the second round of deadlifts were pretty gnarly. Uh, but it was a huge, huge PR. And it's in that workout. The name of the game was don't go. Don't go out hot. I mean, no one ever wins by coming out hot um, and force breaks. I love the way you said that force force the breaks to keep things under control and out. The next workout I'll talk about, I forced myself to break, and it it was very good. Anyway, I'm going to toss the ball in your court. Well, no, no, I I love those. I I love the strategy behind um, your thoughts. Uh, you know, many times you take a break early, like you did. You you forced yourself to on the deadlifts, even though you knew you had capacity to go. But what it would do for you later on in 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 a longer test too. I mean, it was a uh, Medium time domain, I believe, as well. Uh, yes, but you have to you have to have that capacity, and that's something that is built up over training, yes. um, so that then you can be strategic. But um, yes, I found it exactly. It was, I believe, the first time uh, we had a time gate workout. It was sixteen point two, and uh, I started with a four minute clock. Um, you had to um, do twenty five uh, toes to bar. 50 double unders and then yes. 15 squat cleans at 135. Okay. So if you finish that 25, 50 and 15 inside of four minutes, you got another four minutes and we've seen various iterations of, of this before, but my, my point is, you know, in this workout, the squat cleans went down, but the weight went up. It was always 25 toe to yes. bar, 50 double unders, and then a lower number of squat cleans, but higher weights. So you were taking a little bit more time per rep. My point on this, and I think the idea of strategizing over the years, I've strategized more on open workouts than I think I have on anything else. And it's funny because um, I think that's where most of the content when I was early on getting started looking for ideas and tips out there by by that two or three hours after a workout has been released, you can look on YouTube and find everybody has Every tricks on, yes. on this open workout. But this type of time gate workout for me forces me to go a little bit faster than I would be feeling comfortable with if there wasn't that time gate. Because in my mind, especially yeah. the first time I did it, I was so worried. I can't just get stopped at four minutes. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to move on. I mean, who wants a four minute open workout yes. unless it's short, <laughs> like intended to be short, like Fran. Um, uh, so um, here's one where opposite flip of yours, where the pacing has to be there because you know the clock is running and you need that uh, sustained effort over the entire duration. Um, on, on this time gate workout, if you don't push the pace, you're not going to get past that first and earn that extra right. set of time. So it's a mindset um, flip for me where I'm going to feel a little more uncomfortable than I would if you had given me an eight round workout. I would not go very hard those first four rounds. In this case, you need to. And then it just becomes, yes. again, like this workout and your ability to clean heavy. Uh, most people, except for the elites, got stopped out 
maybe in the third third round or yeah. something, you got up to 275, and you weren't knocking out that many at 275 or anything like that. So um, that one left a mark, uh, and I, I'm glad we've seen some time gates <laughs> uh, in the past. And, and we didn't haven't the last couple of years, if I'm remembering right, right. So I wouldn't put it past Bob. I don't to think so. Pull something out like that, like uh, it's not an AMRAP this time. It's uh, well, it'll be an AMRAP, but you have to earn your extra time. And I remember Castro's announcements were always like, "Yep, you have to earn those extra minutes to hurt or something like that." So yes, that's what I. That, I, that sticks in my mind as a strategy different than how maybe yeah. you would most normally uh, approach something like that. And, and I think it's always fun when CrossFit okay. throws something out there with that level of um, variance, right? Or that level of um, mm-hmm. like, well, you know, you're used to having to pace it, but here's a workout where you can't, you have to go or you're going to get in trouble. Like you're, you, you're, or you're capped right. out. So you have to earn your way to the next one by, by, you know, a little skip to your and step. And you don't really um, want to, <laughs> but you have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I I feel like we've done that workout. Uh, we did that in the open. In, in uh, We've done that. That was a repeat workout. It's actually been done in the open in 2016. Mm-hmm. And then it was done in a, a age group qualifier. AGO. Uh, yep, maybe 20 s- AGOQ. And then it was repeated, I believe, in 2020. Um or 2019, it, it, re- it was repeated as an open workout. Mm-hmm. And I'm 90% sure, but uh, I'm scrolling through right now. I'm not seeing it, but I, re- I, I thought it was one that was repeated in the open, but I, maybe not. Either way, that's a, that's a tough one, Rick. Um, the workout that I'll talk about next is, uh, is an age group qualifier workout, but it could easily, easily be an open workout, except that it would, be, uh, it would not be friendly for you would lose most crossfitters like they'd all just quit like we're out we're never we're not doing the open anymore so this likely won't show up for the open but i if if castro was running things he would just say i don't care you know here's the workout but um yeah i don't care it's the age of qualifier 19.2 and this is the workout Mm. it's a couplet i'm going to present it like dave you know it it was it's a couplet it involves burpees and a rower there's 80 bar facing burpees and 4,000 meters on the row. That's the workout. It's, it's almost as if they thought, Hey, let's have them do a 5k row. Well, that's too boring. We don't want to do a 5k row. Let's just have them do 80 burpees first and then a 4k (laughs) row and see how that goes. So that's the workout. And, uh, it is, it's, 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 it's really, it's a, it's a tough test. It's very, very tough. So, uh, we did this workout this past uh, weekend, and and yeah. Uh-huh. So yep. the first time I did this workout, <laughs> I uh, shout out to the masters chatter Justin Lasala. Uh, he was forty five, and I was forty three at the time. So he was in the age group above me, and so we were sending right. messages back and forth during the qualifier uh, with strategy, like, "Hey, how how are?" What are you doing? What are you thinking? Um, and so he was like, hey, the burpees are easy. I think you just go all out on the burpees and then just row. <laughs> so I was like, okay, yeah, Justin said the burpees are easy. I'll just, I'll just do that. And uh, it, it was great advice if you were Justin. For Jason Grubb, is cool. not good advice. So I went all out on burpees. And at 50, I, I had to stop moving. I literally stopped, put my hands on my knees and, uh, mm-hmm. and, and was just breathing. I took probably 10 seconds because I had redlined on the burpees. Then I did slow burpees for the next 30. I, I'm sure I picked up my pace a bit, but then I got on the rower and I was on the threshold of absolute redline meltdown. Um, you know, Chernobyl was, was what's going on inside of me for 4,000 meters. It was mm-hmm. awful. That's it was awful. It was the most awful thing rower. I had ever done. So all that time I, I peeled myself off I'm dying on the floor. Um, so, uh, we, we redid that this, this last Friday I did it. Um, and so, uh, different approach this time we've been, I, I, I know my burpee capacity every minute on the minute. I know if I go max effort, I can do 21, 22 burpees every minute on the minute. But if I dial it back, I know that 80 burpees is, uh, if I divide 80 by five, it's 16. If I do, 16 burpees every minute on the minute. I'm done with my burpees sub five minutes. 
that's not bad. That's like, that's not, that's There's where, kind of where I want to be. Yeah. yeah. And so what I did, I went 16 burpees. It took me about 51 seconds for some moderate pace burpees. And then I would wait the nine seconds to the top of the minute. I do 16 more, wait to the top of the minute, do 16 yep. more. And it allowed me to keep my heart rate in check. I mean, it still hurt. It still wasn't fun, but I can always do 16 more. No big deal. So after that last set of 16, I had about nine seconds, got on the rower, started moving at the five minute mark. And uh, it, it still was pretty gross. The row was extremely uncomfortable. It was no fun at all. You want to quit over and over and over again, but you can't. You can't quit. You got to just do this thing. And uh, yeah, I, I finished, technically I finished 10 seconds slower in training than I did uh, when I was selling my absolute soul to try to make it to the CrossFit Games right. in 2019. And I did get to the games that year, but I sold, I sold it. I feel like if I was in a competition situation, I might even be able to shave maybe 20 or 30 seconds off of, uh, off of this workout. And I'm four, five years older. Um, mm -hmm. So yep. I think, again, that workout was deceptive. It's just 80 burpees. Well, 80 burpees can put you in the tank um, pretty quickly. So if you're, if you're careful with the burpees, and then you go into your 4K row and you just got to suffer for like 15 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have any strategies on the row. Just go. Uh, then it, it was better. But again, different strategies helped. I, I, again, I, I guess I brought up another strategy where I cooled my jets in order to finish better. Correct. Well, yeah. <laughs> considering I did that as well a day later this weekend, it's the third time I've done it. Um, in fact, I never didn't even do it officially for the AGOQ because that was a competition weekend out in Texas that year. Um, but I remember this Saturday getting up from that last burpee at 555. So there's 55 seconds right there. And by the time I yes. sat down, grabbed the paddle, started that first pull, it was maybe 615 something. I think 618 or something stuck in my mind. So between you and you and my, you and me, there's a minute 20, call it, in, t in total elapsed time. And I haven't even pulled a meter yet, let alone my <laughs> rowing yeah. pace versus your rowing yeah. pace. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I remember those times looking. I'm like, oh, this, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. But I, I <laughs> think the burpees hurt. actually hurt me more than, than the row. But, yes. So I love yeah. the EMOM, but you have to trust your training to know what your capacity is to hold for that big of a number, 80 yeah. burpees is no small task. When you're yeah. talking about a five minutes yeah. for you, almost six minutes for me, that's a, that's a good amount of yeah. time doing burpees. So go back to your training, know your numbers, have practiced it. What can yeah. I hold comfortably or yes. semi-comfortably? Semi um, it just helps to have that kind of data. I think that's another takeaway from, yes. your, from your experience there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a last one here I'll give you uh, is, oh, what is the year? 18.5, okay? Open workout, 18.5. And it was actually the third time we've done it, 12.5 and 11.6. Uh, it is in as many, it complete as many reps as possible in seven minutes of three thrusters, three chest of bars, six thrusters, six chest of bars, adding three to each, nine, nine, 12, 12, 15, 15. Yes. My okay. point on this one is, you know, threes and sixes, maybe even nines feel good. It's where do you begin to regulate the pace and take your breaks so that you don't waste a lot of time standing around and still being able to chip away? Because when you're staring at 15 chest of bars, normally a set of 15, in a, in a chipper style workout, hop up to the bar, knock 15 out. However, the accumulation of work at that point, chances are someone may, may be my capacity. I'm not knocking 15 out unbroken at that stage of the game. Yeah. Um, you better be yeah. apt to break it up. So this is one where you're going to continuously work. There's no time gates to get past. Uh, seven minutes is not a lot of time as we've seen this over the years for three different, three different iterations of. Where do you take your breaks? And then how do you right. manage your breaks? And I know you have a very specific way of counting breaths, much more detailed than I do. And it's always something that I need to work on. But 
um, be very methodical in the breaths, maybe the number of breaths that you take and know that I'm just jumping back up to the bar or I've broken the thrusters, take a certain number of breath, breaths and I'm picking the bar back up as uncomfortable as the, that whatever round you're in of thrusters is going to be knowing that that clock suddenly you're at 620 and you don't have you have 40 seconds left and uh, you better sell out. So that was, I thought was another example of accumulation of reps, very simple couplet, but it gets sticky as you get farther yeah. along. Oh, it, it gets insanely sticky. Um, and it's the sneaky workout where, you know, in the first minute, you're into the nines. You might even be done with the nines in the first mm -hmm. minute. And you glance at the clock and all of a sudden that dread punches you in the face. What you're feeling now, you've got six more minutes of this. Um, right. It's deceptive because the three, three, six, six, that's just not that hard. Nine, nine. Okay. 12, 12. This is terrible. And it's not getting better. It's not getting any better. Correct. For, you get five more it, minutes is of just not, awfulness. It's not descending. Like we all like to see descending sets. Um, yeah. it makes us feel better. And we've seen our share of those to end and open, but here's an ascending rep scheme. And I can't, yeah, think of much worse. Staring that number, the larger number, you 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 dropped off, dropped the bar. You're done with that set, and you're like, oh my god, I've yeah. got to do how many more now? Here we go again. Yeah. So, and you think about the uh, intensity that happens in this workout. It is, it is grossly intense. Um, having just mm -hmm. completed my L two this weekend, uh, there was a, a significant conversation about um, couplets and time domains that CrossFit workouts are. You know, the majority of CrossFit workouts should be 15 minutes or less. Um, and the shorter the workout, obviously the increased intensity, the higher the intensity. Uh, and you've got this as a seven minute AMRAP with thrusters and chest to bar where there's no reprieve in this workout whatsoever. That push pull is a devastating combination. The couplet is a devastating combination because you, there's no, there's no place to rest. There's no place to hide. You know, if we think about, mm -hmm. um, the squat clean workout that you mentioned, 25 toes to bar, 50 double unders, 15 squat cleans with increasing weights. That that one with the four minute time caps. You know, the toes to bar um, can be, be, they could be somewhat restful. Not restful, but they're not, they're not killing you. And 50 double unders mm -hmm. is also not spiking anything. Uh, the squat cleans really get that heart rate going, but you're really methodical there. Three, three, six, six, nine, nine, twelve, twelve thrusters and chest to bar, you you have no room to hide in there. Um, there's nothing. Yeah. Uh, it just hurts. It hurts and then it hurts and then it hurts more. And uh, yeah, I mean, seven minutes just doesn't seem like that much time, but it is plenty of time to get a lot of, a lot of reps in. Do you, now here was my question for you. When do you start breaking mm -hmm. up the thrusters and chest to bar on a workout like that? What, when do you break up? Twelves? Uh, yeah, twelve. I think twelve. Yeah. Um, okay. and yeah, I think so too. I, as I've gotten older, I, you know, I haven't done this in a, in a number of years, but maybe, maybe nine on the, on the chest of bars, mm, maybe not yep. nine on thrusters, but nine on chest of bars. I, yeah. I just, I, again, I know my capacity and you get through the nines, yeah. you've got a, and you're just, as you just said, starting to get into the, the time of the workout and suddenly you've got a set of 12 and 12 staring you in the face. Oh, and the other twist to this, remember that when he first did, the thrusters are not 95, they're a hundred. So it's an extra five pounds, extra little bit of weight for the women as well. So it's not your standard pick up the bar at 95 and we all know what 95, 65 feels like. So no, it's yes. did a little tweak there. Uh, those extra five pounds do add that up. little tweak. It's just enough to drive you crazy mentally. Because it's slightly heavier. It's just a little heavier. Mm -hmm. like, yep. how, we Absolutely. do 115 pound thrusters all the time. We do 95 pound thrusters all the time. You throw a hundred pound thruster in there, and and I know for me, like my brain explodes. Mm -hmm. Like I, it just. And why 165? Like that was just a typo. Someone type made a typo, and they just left it there. You know what? Well, hey, this they left I, it. They I, went with it. They're like, yeah, we already printed all the papers. Don't do not change it. It's it's a hundred on this one. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely insane. The, the community um, scrambled for two and a half <laughs> that, that whole time. I seriously, that. like, is it a push to sell two yeah. and a half? Um, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, well uh, it was a push, to, gosh, was a push to sell dumbbells one time. <laughs> it was. You remember that when they released, when they said there were dumbbells, um, of course, I ordered a bunch. 
Uh, but people were buying dumbbells from Home Depot, uh, you know, Walmart, mm-hmm. uh, Amazon. It was just a mad run on madhouse a dumbbell. Yeah. If, dumbbells. If you would have, if you could have bought dumbbell stock Rogue, or Rogue's uh, had, greatest season. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, and, yeah. you know, that stuff happens sometimes, you know, when like when Legends announces that we're going to be using a heavy rope, um, you know, during a, a workout, a lot of heavy ropes get sold, you know, and it's correct. It, it's it's OK. Well, it's that time of the show, Rick, where yeah. uh, we didn't get to do this last week and we often don't do it when we have a guest. Sometimes we do, but it's tips and tricks mm-hmm. time. Um, I know you've got a gadget. You said you have a gadget. So I'm dying to know what this okay. gadget I'm is. Gadget. I have a do gadget. share. Uh, it, it's, it's new to me, and I am one who, um, for the programming that we follow at uh, at our gym, it's off of the phone. It's not on a being led by uh, an instructor, or it's not on the television. It's on the phone, and I'm constantly dropping my phone, putting my phone, propping it up. It's just a simple gym buddy magnetic uh, holder for the phone. Just <laughs> plop it right on the uh, uh, on the rig. Your phone is at eye yep. level. You can exactly see what you need. And it's helpful for, I know it's sold, um, it was sold on Amazon as a way for um, recording and video and hands-free video yep. recording and stuff like that. For for me, I'm just looking for a way that I don't have to keep looking down for my phone, scrolling, figuring out yes. where, where it is and what the next movement is or what I'm doing next. It's just a nice, easy yep. way to snap it onto the rig. So I'll make sure you get it. You can throw that on the, uh, on the show notes as a, I think, I will. 15 bucks off Amazon. Pretty simple. Pretty, pretty fun. I, I have a magnetic phone case as well. Wow. I, I gave it a thumbs up. I didn't even mean to, yeah. but, um, <laughs> it didn't even... I, uh, <laughs> I, I have a magnetic phone case as well. And I love it. I just put it on the rig and it's right there. But, mm-hmm. uh, probably 50% of the time I walk out of the gym and I get to my car that will not start without my phone. Oh. And realize the phone is still stuck somewhere in the gym on a rig. And I don't even remember which one. <laughs> I'll just go in there and look at all the rigs. Yeah. It's a black case on a black rig. It's uh, it's a blessing and a curse. Uh, but it actually is very good for um, if I want to record myself in the gym, I'll actually I can attach it to a kettlebell or even a dumbbell if it's a metal dumbbell and set that dumbbell or kettlebell mm-hmm. anywhere on the floor. And my phone is magnetized to it. So it's um it is good. Thank you. Send that link over. So I'll make sure I show that in the notes. You got um, it. I keep glancing. I keep glancing over at my whiteboard, which you can't see, but it's, it's over here. My tip of the <laughs> week is something I picked up at the level two uh, seminar this weekend. It was, it was so good. If you haven't taken your level two and you, you're just looking to increase your knowledge, be able to see movement better, uh, be tested in a way, like get get uncomfortable because you actually do coaching in front of your peers. It's very, very stressful, very uncomfortable. Um, and I, I don't like being uncomfortable like that, but but hey, uh, I, I did mm-hmm. it and it was good. But here's the tip. Um, it was just a, a reminder. And this was something that Greg Glassman said about, uh, ab- about training. Uh, he said, intensity is the independent variable most commonly associated with maximizing favorable ad- adaptation to exercise. So that sounds a lot like Greg Glassman right there. That's a mouthful. But yeah, yeah. Intensity is the independent variable most commonly associated with maximizing favorable adaptation to exercise. It's intensity. That's the magic pill. Intensity trumps volume. Intensity trumps everything with regards to getting fit as a human being, Um, except for consistency. Consistency beats intensity. So we're looking for you know, consistency. Of course, we're looking for proper mechanics, proper form. Um, but Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times, a lot of times we find ourselves doing, uh, longer workouts, which as competitors, we have a lot of variance in our training. So we have long workouts, short workouts. We, we do a lot in a given week, but I do know that there are CrossFit gyms out there that will have, you know, they'll have workouts that are just, you know, every day is 45 minutes of exercise, 45 minutes, you know, Mm-hmm. This and then this right. and then this and then this. Uh, we, and it, we, it runs more like we all know theory. gyms like that. Um, yep. We do, and it's you know again, everybody has the choice to to decide what they want to do in their gym. Um, but intensity, right. and I was thinking back as when I was thinking at the L two, I was reflecting on how did I get so good so fast? Um, and there were a lot of things that were not perfect about the gym I started at, uh, for sure. But 
there were people there that I was chasing because I was competitive and they were, there were people within reach that, that, that made every effort that I did. Um, and they did true classic CrossFit workouts every day at this gym. Um, I did that work with incredible amounts of intensity. And that was what drew me and made me very excited about CrossFit was this intensity thing and the magic that it had. And I feel like I got really fit really fast because of intensity and probably some good genetics. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I was, I, I, I just loved it. And I was all in and, you know, I just do that. Maybe I've got a knack for the sport, but intensity was absolutely there at the first gym. And I'll say this, and I'm going to stop ranting, but when I decided to try to cross, <laughs> try to qualify for the games in 2016 and 2017, I increased my volume so extraordinarily that I lost intensity. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I took a step back from huge, crazy volume and found intensity again, then I qualified for the games. And I think now, of course, five, six years later, I have a very nice balance between volume and intensity. We, we never want to intensity, sacrifice right. intensity just for the sake of volume. So find, good reminder find that weekend. balance because, because intensity yeah. every day doesn't lead to gains either. You can't run 100 miles an hour each and every day. So find that. No, balance. no, yep. absolutely. Yeah. And your, your central nervous system can't handle that either. Like, Oh, uh, for example, that. when we Correct. did 19.2 last week, I sent it. I haven't almost thrown up in a workout. Like I, when I got off the rower, I pushed it. I pushed it really hard on, on that workout. Uh, I got off the rower and I almost, uh, my body almost, <laughs> almost threw, and I've never thrown up at the end of a workout, but I found intensity. But I can't, I can't perform something like that daily. Uh, I just happened to, no. I really wanted to send it right. on that one, Rick, and I just sold it. And uh, it, uh, my body responded up <laughs> to the intensity. So paid anyway, off. you oh. get it. Um, yeah, that's how that goes. Well, so I was going to say that. Um, what I was going to say, uh, what what's what's up for you uh, this coming weekend? You got anything fun going on as we start to wrap up? Ah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say a good weekend of training. Uh, dealing with a sore foot and hope yeah. that uh, heals itself up here because there's a there's a lot of running that I've missed uh, and I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to making sure I get the proper training in. Uh, there will be a time in the pool as well, but aside from CrossFit, it's uh, what is it going to be? Early February in Cleveland, so nah, not too much going on. Oh, that sounds it's, so, not that sounds great. Yeah, there's no Super Bowl to watch, so you know that's okay. It'll be a good weekend. I know. Train and eat. How about that? I uh, that sounds good. It sounds really good. I think that's my plan as well. Having had a a travel weekend two weekends ago, and then last weekend I don't think we had anything, and then this weekend I was at the L two. I'm ready mm -hmm. to just dial it down. And on Sunday, yeah. yes, I know that I'm going to try the Huberman uh, sauna mega session protocol. So he recommends right. this. So this is if you. You, you can do sauna on a regular basis throughout the week or on more of a once a, once a week basis, you can do this mega session, whereas 30 minutes in the sauna, five minute break, 30 more minutes. And then a little bit later, uh, a few hours later, you do that again. So you actually accumulate two hours of sauna time in one day. And it is a huge mm -hmm. shock to the system. Um, it's a stressor. I mean, sauna is a stressor, uh, but mm -hmm. it is supposed to be... Um, so have some pretty dramatic results um, compared to the everyday, the, the benefits of everyday sauna, which are also very beneficial mm -hmm. to health. There's actually supposed to be some performance boosts with uh, that sauna. Again, mega session is my word. He doesn't use that word, but I think I'm going to give that a go on Sunday. Uh, as long as I'm not in the sauna every night, because it's built, the electric, the electric is in and I'm super excited. Now, um, you know, we'll just uh, maybe save that for Sunday. And uh, it's supposed to be rainy. I, That'd be perfect. If it's rainy and I'm spending I, sauna time, yes. I want to hear all about it next time we talk. Thanks for tuning in to the Masters in Motion podcast. We'd be so grateful if you could take a moment to leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or your preferred podcast app. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Your support helps us reach more listeners and grow our Masters community. Until next time, get bolder, not older.